Folks, it's Wild Card Weekend. Boy, do I have a wild card for you. His name is Mike Polk Jr. And the Rizzo Show starts now. Hello. The Hard Rock Roxino Northfield Park presents The Rizzo Show. And now your host, Tony Rizzo, with co-host Mike Polk Jr. Hey now, hey now. Prop him up. Hello, everyone. That's who we used to say on the news every night. Mm -hmm. Prop him up. Get him out there. He doesn't feel good. Too bad. You know, got to fight through it. Welcome. 2019, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to the first show of 2019. Tony Rizzo, Mike Polk Jr. with you. Well, Michael, are you... Are you in? Have you interviewed for the Browns head coaching job? I'm yeah. scheduled for next week. You're yeah. scheduled for next we'll see, week. We'll see how it we'll goes. We'll see how it goes. Feels yeah. like, Michael, it feels like we're interviewing everyone. All right, let me ask you this. I, we lost for 20 years. Yes. We brought a guy on that turned a clown show around right. into a winner, yeah. and, and you took a playoff team to the brink of their season where it took a rookie quarterback at the end. Are we overlooking Greg Williams here, in your, in your honest opinion? Um, I don't think that they're overlooking him. Um, it is nice uh, to be in a situation, though, where people actually want this gig as opposed to us bringing in Mike Pettin and, and people like that who we'd never heard of. And Greg Williams obviously earned his right to be in the conversation. I don't know how seriously they're taking that. I know they already interviewed them. You would know better than I do. Do you think that they are just going through the motions? And why do they not I, necessarily just grab him right now? I believe Greg is an insurance policy at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, he wants the job badly. I think the Browns are going to do their due diligence, which I would highly recommend. I think they should interview other people. But let's see if this thing circles back around to him. I know this. The guy who I think is becoming the favorite right now is a guy by the name of Dan Campbell. And he works Hearing for a lot the, about him. Say he works for the Saints. Uh, he's an offensive-minded guy, but under that scenario, Freddie Kitchens would stay and everything. I think the Browns see Greg, though, as, as a serious coaching candidate, but they might be wooed by someone else. He had an eight-week interview here with the team, yeah, uh, and he won five games. Um, On a team that won zero games last year, which and, is huge. And one game the year before, and I just feel like the... The, the, whoever does come in here, if it's not Greg Williams, you better go five and three in your first eight games. Your fans are going to be screaming. We've got eight openings for different for head coach positions in the NFL. If Greg doesn't get this gig, is he? Do you think he could I end up on another team? I think he would. And you don't even want to hear one of the teams who I think is considering him. It's the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh huh. And I, 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 I was the last thing I want him to do with a chip on his shoulder is to I go know. to. Somebody else interview. You don't right. want a furious Greg Williams no. playing him twice a year. No, we don't. No. And come get some. Yeah, yeah we don't mean to get any. Um, one of the more curious interviews was uh, Jim Caldwell. He interviewed on Wednesday. Of course, he was uh, the Colts. He took the Colts to the Super Bowl with Peyton Manning. Uh, also, he coached the Bears for a while. Uh, his interview was a bit of a surprise. And, Michael, I think we'll see more surprise interviews. This might sound uh, callous. It might sound like I'm being cynical. But do you think that that has anything to do with the Rooney rule that uh, insists that when there's an opening for a head coach, they have to uh, interview an African Well, I think the way things go nowadays is there'll be a bunch of uh, minorities interviewed. So I don't know if they just did that to... To, to I do feel like I feel like this is the time of year where just Romeo Cornell gets to fly around the country uh, for interviews, like Hello. having just staying at nice hotels and getting no, nice I, dinners. I think, he's like, I know what's going I, on. I think Caldwell's interesting because he's he's had two head coaching jobs. Yes. Usually you he's don't got, get three. Right, right. You get two. Ask Eric Mangini. You get two chances. Rarely do you get three. On Thursday, the Browns interviewed a guy I've never heard of in my life, mm -hmm. folks. Uh, offensive coordinator Kevin Stefanski. Stefanski! How many Stefanski heads we got in the audience tonight? Um, he's at the bottom of your screen talking to wide receiver Stefan Diggs. Oh, case. that's the footage know, we have of him. Because I knew you knew who he was. That's the footage Michael, we have. Michael, don't feel bad. I didn't know who he was. No. Listen, some of these interviews are conducted because coordinators are going to need, be needed and sometimes just to pick somebody's brain. Mm -hmm. Somebody will say, hey, you ought to talk to Stefanski. Tell mm. John Dorsey, our GM. You ought to talk to Stefanski. He's an interesting guy. I've said this, I completely trust John Dorsey through this process until he gives me any reason to not trust him in any decision that he's made, which is, he's been pretty clean so far. So I do trust him when he's talking to these uh, coordinators and stuff. I really do wonder though, you've got, what do they, what have they proven that Greg Williams hasn't thus far? Again, that's what you're going to have to sell me on. I mentioned Dan Campbell, uh, he is uh, technically the tight ends coach. 
Here's a couple of things. Number one, he comes from the Bill Parcells tree, mm -hmm. which a lot of people, people like. love that. Does much better than the Bill Belichick tree yeah. for whatever reason. Number two, Browns believe, fans believe, media, that he would keep Freddie Kitchens as offensive coordinator. Listen, it's not a deal breaker, mm -hmm. Freddie Kitchens. However, the Browns really like him, and they really like the chemistry he has with Baker Mayfield. The problem is they don't feel like Freddie is ready to be a head coach yet. There's usually a progression, a couple of years at least as a coordinator. He was our running backs coach oh, that's right. in yeah. August. I thought he was quarterbacks. And, yeah. and, 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 and then he and got promoted to OC when Todd Haley got fired. So, But the Browns love his offense. And people are very excited about him. Fans right. are excited about him. And obviously Baker has a connection with him. But you're right. I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't had the time yet. But the Browns are obviously terrified of possibly losing him and being the team that let him get away. Right. Because he would be an OC like that right. on another team. And as you know, people have been asking to interview him. And other teams are, and they've said, and they've said no. That's you can't interview with anybody yet. Which is, uh, is that a unique thing for them to do at this point? Uh, no, I, I think the really good news I got out of Berea this week was Baker Mayfield is not emotionally involved in this decision. And how about this? Baker feels like whoever they bring in here, Baker's going to win. you got to love that. I Am do. I right? I do. He, you know, like, in other words, he's not in on the interviews. He's not, If he goes, I can't have this guy, like, he would never do it. He feels like, look, I trust, like you, I trust John Dorsey. Whoever he's going to bring in here, I'm still Baker Mayfield, and I'm going to win. And it's so much more refreshing to hear this. And, uh, you know, there's, we, he will always walk that line between arrogance and confidence. And you, that's a tough line to walk, but he's backing it up. If he were, if he had that sort of Manziel arrogance and confidence, but just did nothing to actually uh, prove that he deserves that right. arrogance, it'd be one thing. But he's he's backing it up, and it's so much better than hearing a press conference at the end of the year with God love you, Brian Hoyer, or somebody saying, "There's like, what do you think of the coaching system?" Like, I'm just going to try and keep my head down, keep working out, and do the best job I can do. That's what I'm going to keep doing. And we don't hear that anymore. We actually hear something exciting right. out of a quarterback. All right, somebody who may be interviewed next week is Mike McCarthy, former coach of the Packers, Michael. Here's a guy who has instant credibility. Yep. He won a Super Bowl. Yep. It got a little old in Green Bay, which it does after 10 years. Yeah. Hello. Um, but I don't feel like any fans want Mike McCarthy as their head coach. I think like two years ago, we'd have killed for him. I honestly wouldn't be upset at all with that, especially if you can hang on to Freddie Kitchens as, uh, um, as your offensive coordinator, because then you have you can give him a couple of years, then you have somebody to oversee Freddie Kitchens, then possibly if he wants to go uh, transition to head coach, he's got the experience there. Right. But I wouldn't mind seeing somebody with some sort of, I, I would prefer somebody with some experience. I know the hot thing is to grab somebody off the street and be like, we discovered this guy. Guy, but I, I would like the experience. Um, Michael, do you know who the wild card is in this whole thing? Who's that? It would be your friend, Browns owner Jimmy Haslam. Now listen, I'm hearing good things. I'm Just hearing. Look at that strut. Just look at it. <laughs> What a goof. What do you mean strut? He's walking. That's ridiculous. What do you mean strut? He's oh, very cut conscious. Him some slack. He hired John Dorsey. He's, I know Give him did. some credit. No, I know. All right, let me say it. I'm hearing good things in that. <laughs> these guys, truly, these guys, the Haslam. He's still Jimmy going. I'm sorry, go ahead. These guys, all right, it's a bit of a strut. <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> the Browns owners are not going to get involved. They're going to let John Dorsey do his job. I hope so. I understand. But you have to understand. When we got hired here, right. you know, we had people that loved us, but the big boss had to okay us being hired. Sure. That's the same thing that's going to happen with the Browns. Do you feel like this time Jimmy will go with the person that John Dorsey recommends? I do. I, I hope so. I think he has, uh, he's, I hope to think, I like to think he's learned his lesson because he, he has made essentially one good decision since coming here, and that was hiring John Dorsey. And if you, and everybody praised him for it. He, got, he was getting ridiculed by mostly me for years and years, uh, and deservedly so because of some of these decisions he's made and, and some, of the, some of the moves he's made. Sure. But now, uh, he's actually done something right, and he's got maybe he has a taste for being told that he did something well, and hopefully he'll hang on to that and want to keep it going mm. and trust. And that way he can always write this off and say, you know, it was my I choice to bring that's him right. in. John I didn't, picked him. That's, that's nice. right. Um, all right, I'm going to let you be God here for just a minute. I love it. All right, if you could, you already played God last year. In the yeah, play. it was great. Uh, if you could pick any coach in the league, anybody to coach the Browns, who would it be? Okay, this is your your life. Anybody right. you want. This was presented to me differently when I made my selection. I want to make that clear by our producer Kate because I did not know who you picked. I picked. Uh, I was thinking logically and rationally. I picked Greg Williams um, because I like. If I have my choice out of everybody right now, that's who I would trust. You're still going to go, Greg. Forward. Michael, I want you to know that 80. We did a poll. 
on ESPN Cleveland, and 85% of the fans wanted Greg Williams to come That's back. assuming we keep Freddie Kitchens, too. If he's, yes. if he's not yes. part of the deal, then I don't no, want No, he's it. part of the deal. Okay, if he's part, he's of, the part of the deal, I want that. And by the way, I like that choice. I wouldn't have a problem with that. But then I, I heard who you, you picked. Well, let's see who I picked, Mike. Dude, uh, uh, yeah. You picked the Bill return, Belichick. The return of Bill. I didn't know we could pick people who were okay. Look, look man, Brady's going to retire soon. Uh -huh. Bob Kraft sided with Brady. Screw him, Bill. Come on home, baby. Yeah. Come back to Cleveland. All is forgiven. Give us one last run. All kidding aside, um, Josh McDaniels, offensive coordinator of the Patriots, worked out Baker Mayfield before the draft. They mm. love Baker Mayfield. Sure. A lot of people don't know this. The Patriots were going to trade up for Baker Mayfield. If the Browns didn't take him number one, they were trying to get to number two. Wow, I didn't know that. That's how much they like Baker <laughs> Mayfield. <laughs> That's All a right. good sign. When does the Browns season begin again? I can't wait. When I think it's already started, technically. Right. Coming yeah. up! Time to predict the future. Oh, you know we're good at that. Mm -hmm. You've got the questions, we've got the answers. Rizzo Show rocks on after this. Here's Kevin Love be traded this year. Um, I don't believe so. I think that they want him as part of this rebuild as long as they can. It's not like we have this wealth of superstars currently wanting to come here, and you can debate whether he's a superstar or not, but he is a helpful part of this team, and I'd like him to be here for it. We are in pace right now to have the worst record in the NFL, or very close to it. Yes, NBA, Michael, I, think yes. It, I think it's 50-50 whether or not Kevin Love gets Yeah, with, I mean, gets If they can get a ridiculous right deal, then yeah. I, they'll yeah. take it. But. Cavs need assets. All right, number two, will the Cavs land... Zion Williamson, the superstar phenom from Duke. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Uh, I don't. It all depends on that lotto and how those things go. Call but, me Dan. Yeah. Call me Danny. Because if I get on that plane, you know we're. Playing how mad Zion. would everyone be if we won the lottery this year again? I, I, believe, I, I believe it was Bill Simmons yeah, who said he, on his he'll... podcast. He said if the Cavs win the draft lottery again, he's going to quit sports. Yeah. Um, we've only won it five times. I don't we know what you're bitching about. All right, let's switch to football, and we start with your Brownies. Michael, you want him. Will Greg Williams be the head coach of the Browns next year, yay it or nay? It doesn't seem to be going that way. I, they interviewed him, and I, I think that they'd be more, they'd be talking him up more if that were the case. How about you? No. No, I you, don't think he will. And I, you know what? Maybe he deserves a better fate, but I thought he did a great job. Yep. Maybe we'll do it. Will the Browns, oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Drum roll, please. Where is the music? I need music. Here it comes. Put it uh, in and post. Will, will the Browns win their home opener? Since 1999, the Browns have lost 14 home <laughs> openers, won one, and tied one. We last, could improve on that record, hopefully. Last year. Do, yeah. you know, do you know who knows we haven't won a home opener? Who's no? that? Baker. Yeah. You know what that means? Yeah. It means we're going to win happen. a home opener. He'll make it happen. Um, speaking, yeah, no, I think we will. Speaking of wins and losses, Michael. I am worried about this because everybody has us in the Super Bowl. I hate already. it, too. Everybody has us in the Super Bowl. Will the Browns make the playoffs? Um, I do believe that they're going to make the playoffs. Okay, never use that elf again. Never. I don't like it. He's never cared for that elf. He's very anti-elf. Look, look at that. I know. It's obnoxious. We're a football team. It's embarrassing. It is. We're not a clothing manufacturer. <laughs> no, it's bad. No, I, playoffs? I, do, I think, yeah, between that or the wild card, we're going to get one of those. Hey. Everybody else in this, everybody else in this division is on their way down, in my opinion, and we're on the way up. Uh, I'm going to say we are making the playoffs. So you actually should kind of be in the playoffs right now this yeah. weekend. Yeah. Uh, if you had a kicker from football to baseball, how about the boys of summer? Will Corey Kluber be your in the opening day starter? Six weeks uh, till pitchers and catchers, from what I understand. Got to start thinking about this. I still, I wish that Corey Kluber were going to be our opening day starter. I think he's still gone. Personally, how about you? I, you know, I've been saying that. I know. All along. And again, I don't want Corey do Kluber to be I gone. I want him here. And everybody's like, but the you Indians know, are like, like, we don't have the money. Like, what are you going to do? There's nothing we can do. I'm like, well, you could spend some more money Speak, or you could sell the team. Speaking of starters, what about Trevor Bauer? Will Trevor Bauer be here and will he win the Cy Young? Trevor Bauer will be here, I believe. I don't know about the Cy Young. I think he's probably already got ro uh, room on his mantle made for it because of his uh, confidence. Um, but I don't know. Well, we'll see. He's He's gotten better and better each year. What do you think? Next to his drone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the drone. The, the, drone picks, the, picks it up. Thanks, Katie. Flies it over here. Uh, Trevor Bauer, uh, no, I don't think he'll win the Cy Young Award. No. Mike, I know you aren't a big golf fan, okay? But what about Tiger? Will Tiger win a major this year? The majors are the Masters, yes. the U.S. Open, right. PGA, and the uh -huh. British. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I am not a big golf fan, but I do know enough to know that, no, he definitely will not. He's cooked. He's done. He won't win another major. How about you? I think he might. Yeah. I really do. I He was close this year. Mm -hmm. He really was. And that's like the only real debate golf fans have right now. I know. By the way, they played in um, uh, uh, Hawaii. 
this weekend. Poor babies. Kids out there, if your kid's a football player or a basketball player, give them a golf club. Yeah. All right, this one is Polk specific. Mm -hmm. Will Mike Polk Jr. get a tattoo? Wow, they really got me tatted up in that, huh? I like that, man. Yeah, what's I that? like that look. You um, look bad, dude. I, you know, I've already got like 75 tattoos all over my body. I don't feel like you I do not have one. Have you ever thought about getting one? I've never considered getting. I've never felt that strongly about anything in my entire life. How about you? Browns go to the playoffs. Will you get a tattoo for the show? No, I'll just enjoy the football <laughs> team that I like very much. I don't need to wear it and prove it to Browns anybody. Browns win the Super Bowl. Will you get a tattoo then? Imagine after you die and you're on the coroner's table. And they I will and buy. Go, You'll buy my I tattoo. I will buy the tattoo. Are they and expensive? I, and I can get it anywhere I want and uh, what I want. I, I, I didn't. Uh, I, I, you know, we have a rule. If you didn't try it by 30, mm -hmm. 57. I'm not trying no, anything. No tattoos. Including tattoos. Michael, I can't let anyone burn my skin. I don't mind it. that, but have you ever seen like one of your buddies where he, he his friend did it himself for a Browns <laughs> one and it's like a, a, a lopsided Misspelled bone. word? Mi yeah. yeah. Nah. All right. Coming up, Mascot <laughs> Madness. We'll tell you who wants to pull the plug on animal mascots. Look at what happened. That I know. Longhorn went after poor, poor little Ugga. I know I was there. Oh, wow. I'm Stay holding them back there. Embarrassing. 6,000 a game. That's a lot. Welcome. <laughs> we got to have an offline, online feed where yeah. you can hear Mike and I during the break. Welcome back to the Rizzo Show. College Football Championship game tomorrow night, Michael. Woo! Alabama and Clemson. I'm so bored of watching we these are. two teams. Michael, who do you have? Well, apparently so are is most are most people because apparently they're having a hard time getting selling this thing out. It's in Santa Clara. Sure. Who they're drinking wine. No but, one cares about college football. But how much I'm sure that's a big part of it, but how much of it is also we're just sick of seeing these same teams. Yeah. They're great. It's they're both great teams, no doubt. But if this isn't an argument yeah. to go to an 18 playoff and actually get some interesting right. teams in there to mix it up, I don't know. PETA, Michael, PETA is calling for Texas and Georgia and others to stop using live mascots after this incident. One, just one Bevo, problem. Bevo, the Longhorn, Bevo, the Longhorn steer, nearly trampled the Georgia Bulldog. Look at, he goes after the little fella. I can't. Look at, the little, look at the little guy run out of here. He's like, oh my God, no, no, what's going on? It's like you can't put a 4,000 pound steer in a loud football stadium and not expect it to spaz out. You know what my out. favorite mascot is? What's Come that? on now. Where is it? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, uh, swags, baby. Yep. Yeah. He's that seen dog some bad is a football. Stud. Why the eye roll, Kevin, our floor director? What is that? That thing never. You don't like Swagger? You know what I like about Swagger is it doesn't know one trick. I've only ever seen it on the ground he eating. Eats. That's, That's it. it. That That's it. That is the perfect he's, Cleveland mascot. He eats it's never going Steeler to a fans for lunch. It's never getting on a box. It's not jumping over <laughs> anything. Every time you see it, it's just like oh, looks like everybody's dog. No in their pets living room. allowed, but it's still our favorite place. Let's see what's happening at the Roxino. Get on board with Hard Rock Roxino Northfield Park's Come Sail Away Cruise Giveaway. Win a Caribbean cruise valued at $5,000 or up to $2,500 in free play each week. Earn entries every day until January 25th and three times the entries on Tuesdays. Drawings will be held each Friday with three winners every hour from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Treat yourself to an amazing four-course meal special at Cozar's Wood-Fired Grill and delight in the Cozar's happy hour every Sunday through Thursday featuring delicious bites from the exclusive happy hour menu direct from Broadway the 2016 America's Got Talent finalist the clairvoyance bring their world champion mentalism performance to Hard Rock Live Saturday January 19th at 8 p.m. find your rhythm at the Hard Rock Roxino Northfield Park Vegas experience Ohio address God, my bad. My thing was down. <gasps> what is it, Kate? Uh, we're, we're on here <laughs> arguing. That's us coming back Bye. from break. Stay tuned. Fox Game Day Prime, followed by our good friends. More importantly. Big Chuck and Lil Chuck. Coming up at 1230. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Your plug or rama time. Uh, come down and see us Tuesdays at Pickwick and Frolic. Still doing that variety show all the time. And this is my impression of us just coming back from this break. Riz going, Kate, what am I doing? How much time do I <laughs> no, have? No, I didn't what know are we how talking much time about? is left. You know how much time is left? None. <laughs> I loved it. How was your private party, by the way? I'm it, was New it was very strange. We'll talk off air. But thank you for having me, that family. <laughs> Good to be alive. Good night, Happy everybody. Day, everybody.